welcome to part two of the video if you haven't watched part one do check it out if not you'll be missing some important information so part two cleaning agents so the sole purpose of cleaning agents is to remove grease or oil stains in your textbook we're going to learn about soap and detergent so what's the process to produce soap well, it's called saponification, and it involves taking your fat or oil through the process of esterification. So what is esterification? Esterification is when you take fatty acids plus, plus glycerol, and then you'll eventually create fats or oil plus water. So when we take the fat and oil, right now we're going to mix it with strong alkali. Okay, take the fat or oil, mix it with strong alkali like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Then you're going to produce soap plus glycerol. Now glycerol is a side product that we eventually do not want. So we're going to learn a method later on how to separate them. But as for now, this is how you produce soap. And the process is called saponification. If you don't know how to produce your fat or oil, please check out the part 1 video. Remember the, about the glycerol, if it's only 1 OH, then it will be alcohol. But if it's 2 OH, then it will be diol. But if it's 3 OH, it will be glycerol. But anywho, so for an example of making fat and oil, it's just to take your fatty acid like your carboxylic acid. So carboxylic acid, you're going to mix it with alcohol, which has only 1 OH. Then you're going to get your fat or your oil, which is your ester, plus water. Now, a tip, soap can also be named as fatty acid salt, sodium salt, or potassium salt depending on what you use. If you use potassium hydroxide as a strong alkali, so eventually your soap is going to be called potassium salt. How do you name your soap? There's only two steps to it. The first step is to name the metal first, whichever strong alkali you use. If you use sodium hydroxide and you know sodium, that's the metal, so it will be sodium then look at number two. Step number two is to look at the number of carbon in the soap. If you have only 12 carbon, then it's laurate. So it will be sodium laurate. But what if your soap and you see the structure, there's 16 carbon. So it will be sodium palmitate. If there's 18 carbon, then it will be sodium stearate. But what if you don't use sodium hydroxide and you decided to use potassium hydroxide? Then it's the same thing. You name your metal first. So it's potassium and if you see their 16C, it's potassium palmitate. So this all depends on the type of metal you use and the number of carbons in the soap. And how I memorize all this, laurate, palmitate, palmitate and stearate, honestly, just repeat it, say it all over again for like five times straight. And also, I used to play with like this toy. Um, the name of the toy is like LPS, stands for Littlest Pet Shop. So LPS, right? And it goes in order from the least carbon to the most amount of carbon. For example here, if we can observe here, the metal you're using is sodium. So they must have used sodium hydroxide as their strong alkali. And now let's count the amount of carbon. 1, this is 14, this is 1. So 1 plus 14 plus 1, you'll get 16. And 16 is under P. So it's sodium palmitate. K for potassium. Now we're going to count the amount of C's there are here. C's for carbon, of course. So 1, and there's 10, and there's 1. So all together, you will get 12. So 12 is for lorry. So same thing as the rest. Easy, right? Okay, let's move on. So this is an experiment of how to prepare the soap. And preparing the soap, the process is called saponification. If you don't remember, it's fat or oils plus strong alkali, then you'll get your soap plus glycerol. But remember, glycerol is the side product that you eventually do not want. We have to perform a procedure where we can filter it out. Add your fat or oil together with your strong alkali inside a beaker. And if you notice, it will form eventually like a two layer. And the reason is because fat or oil tends to be less dense than the alkali itself. So strong alkali will sink to the bottom whereas fat or oil will be on top. So you're going to heat it up. So when you heat it up, it becomes one layer like this. So this one layer is your soap 
plus your glycerol. Now, how do you separate your glycerol, right? You're going to add a, a substance called sodium chloride. Yes, sodium chloride, N-A-C-L, like salt, the normal salt you use for cooking, you're supposed to add that. Add sodium chloride, and what it will do eventually is it will, pre it will precipitate the soap, or it will reduce, or you can answer in exam, it will reduce the solubility of the soap. So essentially, it's just making the soap insoluble. But as you can see, the ones that's clumped up together, that's your soap. And the liquid is your glycerol. Now you can take a filter funnel to just filter it out so that you have it, your soap and your glycerol, all separated. So once you form your soap and you mix it with water, the soap will ionize in water to produce soap ion and metal ion. Soap will ionize in water and break down and you'll get soap ion as well as metal ion. For example, we have here. So let's count how many C's are there. So 12 and we have sodium here. So remember how to name the soap? You need to get the name of the metal first and the metal that they are using is sodium. Then you're going to count the amount of C's there are. So since there are 12 C's, so this is sodium laureate. The soap is in one piece and when it's added into water, when it's like um, submerged in water, eventually this soap will ionize us in water to produce See, we have metal ion and we have soap ion. Moving on to self-test. Write a chemical equation when soap molecule of potassium stearate, which is this one over here, is added into water. Easy. So you're just going to draw an arrow that um, indicating that it's ionizing in water. And you're just going to separate the two to produce metal ion as well as soap ion. Okay, soap ion can be represented in three ways. So number one is formula. Remember, soap ion is an ion after all, so don't forget to add your negative here. The second way is a zigzag drawing, like mountains, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So each side here, or each edges, represents one C. See? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 15, 16, 17, 18. And this is the last C over here. So since we have 18 C, this means this is a steroid. So if you plus this with sodium ion, let's say, it will be a sodium steroid. Number three is simplified drawing, but please don't use this in SPM. Next, what you need to know is soap ion has two parts. So one is the like head and one is the tail, but don't write that in the exam. Okay, so the head part is called the hydrophilic part. And hydrophilic, so philic, um, basically what it means is it, it likes water. All right. So when it likes water, it is soluble in water. And phobic. Phobic sounds like phobia, right? So you don't like it, right? So the hydrophobic part is not soluble in water. It is, however, soluble in grease. So remember, the hydrophilic part likes water, whereas the hydrophobic part, it's insoluble in water. It doesn't like water, but it is soluble in grease. So how is soap being used to clean the grease or oil stains? let's check out step by step so soap ionizes in water to produce soap ion as well as metal ion that's what we learned just now so what happens next is this reduces the surface tension of water and when the surface tension of water has been reduced water is able to wet the surface of the dirty cloth easily now the hydrophilic part is the soluble is the part that is soluble in water right whereas the hydrophobic part is the one that is soluble in grease so if you notice, look at the hydrophilic part, it's like towards the water, whereas the hydrophobic part is towards the grease that's on top of this cloth here. So the hydrophobic phobic part goes into the grease. Now, after that, what you're going to do is shake it. You have to shake it, or you have to agitate it, or you have to scrub it. So then later, the grease will be pulled away from the cloth. Think of it like a washing machine. It has to rotate in order to get rid of all the dirt. It has to spin. If not, the dirt is not removed properly. Later on, the grease will be breaked into smaller droplets. And then repulsion between negative charges of the soap ion, this will prevent the small droplets of grease to recombine again. And then the last step is to just rinse it with water to remove all the grease droplets. 
So in an exam, they can probably ask you stuff like, hey, describe cleaning mechanism of soap to remove a greasy stain. So you're going to explain this one by one, step by step. And remember to always start with when soap ionizes in water to produce the soap ion and the metal ion. The logic is is because you want to explain the hydrophobic and the hydrophilic part, which one is like attached to which. And then when it's shaking, Baru degrees away the grease will be pulled away from the cloth and then Baru, it breaks into smaller droplets and then you're going to explain how when it's breaking into smaller droplets it will not combine again so then you will have to explain about the repulsion between negative charges of the soap ion to get rid of all the small grease droplets rinse it with water an extra tip emulsion is basically when the head is soluble in water not the head but the hydrophilic part is soluble in water and the hydrophobic part is soluble in grease so in an exam they can ask you a question like this soap and grease in water forms and you're gonna answer an emulsion okay moving on to the next cleaning agent which would be the detergent so what's the step or what's the process to produce detergent so as we all know the process to produce soap is saponification whereas to produce detergent there will be two steps involved step one is to perform the process called sulf sulfonation and step two is neutralization so sulfonation it comes from the word sulfonic acid i mean i think of it that way all right so soap can be known as salt of fatty acid but then detergent is salt of sulfonic acid and sulfonic acid is from petroleum okay try to observe this don't really try don't really memorize it but try to observe it and just memorize it from a visual perspective but like not you don't have to know it in detail you just need to know okay it's from sulf sulfonic acid and sulfonic acid is basically from petroleum okay, next so how do you name a detergent okay the, there's three things you need to know but normally it's just found in objective questions so usually it's just long and weird and it has the word sulfonate in, in it for example sodium and then however you pronounce this sulfonate um detergent is basically made by two steps as mentioned which is the sulfonation and then the neutralization okay the raw material that was used is petroleum and detergent is actually a salt of sulfonic acid and sulfonic acid as mentioned is from petroleum so detergent is a salt that contains sodium or potassium ion soap as well remember because that's the strong alkali that they use sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide okay so both soap ion and detergent ion are anion meaning to say they have negative charges they're negatively charged ions right so coo negative and oso3 negative okay so soap and detergent what are their similarities so they both have really long carbon tail but differences is look at their head not the head remember it's called hydrophilic part so it's coo negative and oso3 negative so shortcut um if you ever see this in objective questions and this is the hydrophilic part this is the hydrophobic part um, over here, if it's soap, it will be C, but if it's detergent, it will be S. So if question were to ask you, how is the mechanism cleaning for detergent? It's the same thing like soap, just now what we've learned, so you guys can rewind a bit. But instead of saying soap ion, you can say the detergent ionizes in water to produce detergent ion. Alright, you can just say that. That's all. Okay, so let's see. A comparison between the soap and detergent so for as for raw materials soap uses fats or oils whereas detergent uses petroleum and remember soap is salt of fatty acid whereas detergent is salt of sulfonic acid and then the soap the structure is like this where the hydrophilic part is coo minus whereas the detergent is oso3 minus okay and you see the hydrophilic part contains carbon and the hydro part of a detergent contains sulfur so is soap biodegradable yes is detergent biodegradable no so effectiveness effectiveness of soap in soft water soap is very effective in it and detergent is very effective in soft water but hard water however soap is less effective not to say it's not effective at all it's just less effective but detergent is still effective 
Now, what's the difference between soft water and hard water? So soft water are exam- examples of soft water can be like distal water, tap water, rain water, or even ra- river water. But hard water, however, it's like well water, sea water, they're just really harsh because it has hard water contains high concentration of calcium ion and magnesium ion. So if the question asks you, why is soap less effective in hard water? You're going to answer is because the soap ion combines magne- combines with the magnesium ion and the calcium ion that's found in the hot water to form insoluble salts, also known as scum. For example, this is the soap ion and this is the calcium. Look, when it combines, it forms an, an insoluble salt. So this is why it makes it harder or it makes it less effective for the soap to clean out the grease or the oil stain. The formation of scum reduces the amount of soap available for cleaning. Imagine this, first we have 5 soap ion, but because some of the soap ion is attached to the magnesium ion or the calcium ion, now we have less number of soap ion. Now remember when I say soap is less effective in hard water because it combines with the calcium ion as well as the magnesium ion to form to form insoluble scum and not insoluble scum insoluble salt but then detergent it's still effective in hard water when it, when the detergent ion eventually combines with the magnesium ion or the calcium ion it forms soluble salts so no scum is formed therefore detergent is still able to do cleaning effectively in hard water but soap you can't because it forms insoluble salt also known as scum so there will be less soap ion or less soap available for cleaning if the question asks you so how do we make detergent even better now there are a few ways to do it but you're just going to answer at biological enzymes so what are some examples of biological enzymes we have amylase protease and lipase so what's the function of biological enzymes it's to help to remove protein stains like blood curry stain milk and sugar that's all for now don't forget to check out the description box or the comments down below to get access to our google form link so that you guys can do your own self-tests